Huh? There we are, <laughs> thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're heading out for a day out. Or heading off for a day out even. Yeah. Uh, going to the Great British Car Museum. Something we saw on the Hubnap channel. So if I remember, I'll stick the link above. And he visited it. And it's a museum, obviously, for British classic cars. And I think it's fairly new. I th yeah, I think he went before it was open, didn't he? Yeah. I, I failed to mention in the um, yesterday's video that there's a fantastic dog walk around the site. It goes all the way around the site. So it must be a mile, two miles, uh, through all the woods and everything. It's really good. Bridge. Way museums up there. Up there? Yeah. To the left? Yeah. Oh, I missed that. Some sort of sign coming up. Caution. Might be here. Might, the sign here says now open. What's but open? This is it here. Turn. What? There's no right turn. I think you've got to go. Oh, left turn only. Okay. Please use left turn only. Please use white lane at roundabout for car park. What? Well, I think follow that car that went round. I think it means just stick in this lane. Yeah. Well, where are we going then? Over there to the car park. Where? No. Carry on going round. Oh, I see, right. Good job I'm with you, isn't it, really? Yeah, I know, I know. I get confused easily. Yeah, I know. You need a good co-pilot, don't you? Yeah. And you follow it into here. I thought here. you were talking about parking somewhere else. I know, because it says White Lane. You think, well, where's yeah. White Lane? That's the thing there, isn't it? Drive Dad's car. Oh, right, yeah. Or drive a car we used to own. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about now, over here? It's all dirty, isn't it? Yeah. About here, then. A Mini Cooper over there. Probably could have parked in here, but didn't want to be sticking out too far. Besides, it's a bit shady around the back. There we are, <laughs> thumbnail. <laughs> yep. Right. You masked up. Yep. Mm. Mm, very nice. You don't remember this, do you, sir? No. 1923. 250,000 of them made. 250,000, yeah. Yeah. Wow. They produced it till 1939, he said. This is the 30, 1931 model. And the 25 and a... What's that? 33. There's an Austin. Seven Swallow here, 
said they've got all the windows well not all the windows down obviously but they've got the windows down so you can look in and you can smell what the cars used to used to be like two-seater this one no. yeah two-seater the roof that goes all the way back yeah that's nice wasn't it little sports model yeah that's an austin 7 opal Yeah. <laughs> 1934 caravan. So 100 years ago, you might have been going round to one of those. Well, not quite 100 years ago, is it? But Great. it's getting on that way. What's it like inside? Just got a little table and like two benches. Two benches. You would have had your sofas in there, wouldn't you? It wasn't much of a caravan, was it? I suppose you could get a kettle and things in there. On uh, wire wheels. And all the outside table. He says it could be a very long journey. Look at that. Yeah, look hitch. at the hitch. Wow. It looked like it had some form of an overrun braking. I might be wrong. But... Traffickators here. So Sorry, go on. Quite a few cars in the Austin 7 uh, oh, yeah, range, the, weren't there? The Ruby, the Pearl, the Nippy, the two seater, the open road. And this Austin 16 and an Austin 10. So the Austin 16, obviously, they one of the bigger models, isn't it? Mm. Oh, look at the space in the back seat here. <laughs> wow. Well, I think if they brought the seat a bit further forward, they could have more boot. You might be able to reach the table then. Well, I don't think you could reach the table. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been quite comfortable, that, really, wouldn't it? If mm. you were in the back there, stretch your feet out. Got a little curtain, is not it, at the back? Can't fit all this in. This is the thing they're using uh, for uh, the the guide. You press the button and you wear the headsets, so I can't play the audio. So it's on the headsets. It's, uh, it's good. So we're at chapter two now. Then. Yeah, we're into the 1945 to 1957. This is the model before the one we had. Mm. Quite nice, isn't it? All square like. Yeah, yeah. So it was saying, obviously, in the 40s or so, that Austin was coming under a lot of competition basically because they joined with Morris to form the BMC Corporation. This is a Morris Minor from 1950. Very familiar site but obviously this is one of the early ones. The leather tourniquet. Uh, tor torno? Hood. Look at that. Beautiful, isn't it? You like that one? Jenny? <laughs> Pulling a face. It's a model million. So this is okay. celebrate the millionth model. Oh, is that why it's got millions on the back? Yeah. The Mo Morris right. one million. Right. So. 
That's a very special car, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. This is Morris now, isn't it? I remember Morris. going in one of those. Yeah. When I was at college. Yeah. Some of us used to get in the very back bit. She shouldn't really have done. No. It's a huge storage area, isn't it? Mm. That's no, good. Yeah, so Land Rover is probably one of the most successful vehicles ever built. Over two million were produced, and it was the brainchild of Morris and Spencer Wilkes, who was the managing director, and Morris, the chief designer at Rover. So 1949, with a little break, and they're making Defenders again today. Yep. But this was the Land Rover Mark One or Series 1, as a lot of people would know it as. It's 71 years old, it says. Yeah, so this is a 71-year-old vehicle, and it looks like it's seen some life, doesn't it? It does, not it? Just a bit. Holes in the side there. Yeah, fabulous vehicle. So this is the, what, Morris Oxford. Another comfortable car from the 50s. It's a slightly bigger thing, isn't it? Two years after I was born. Yeah, I was just going to say that was what my Uncle John had. All right. It's black. He had a black one though. Yeah. But I remember the three, the seats at the back. Yeah. Because I used to sit in the back with my cousins. Yeah. Let's have a look inside. Yeah, a nice sort of pale blue, grey colour, wasn't it? Yeah. Armrest there. Yeah. Oh, it was a nice car, wasn't it? Your Uncle John was a postman, wasn't he? That's right, he was, yeah. yeah track... he used to go out on Sundays with them and yeah, Dad and you... used to take his Woolsey 8. You'd have about four kids in the back, would you? Three of us you normally in the back. All right, it's not too bad then. Yeah. Oh, Great I do boots, vaguely it? remember it. Yeah. It, it wasn't this colour, as I say, it was black. Yeah. Yeah, that's quite a nice colour this, isn't it? But big boot on the back. Yeah. A nice touring saloon. Hmm. Well, at the other end of the spectrum, there's the Van Den Pla Princess 1959. A very big Austin, it says. Wow. Well, the interior there. Oh, we've got a radio, hasn't great it? Great big seats. I don't think there was that much room in the back there, compared to some of the older cars. Yeah, the table's a bit nearer. Yeah, I suppose so. But the We've got a big boot. Massive boot. It's four litre, Van den Pla Princess, four litre. Huge. Yes, it's so this is something that's very familiar to me. This is, was, um, this is a Mini 850. Yeah. So I had a Mini van, didn't I? Which yeah, was, which was that colour, wasn't it? It was that colour, yeah. This is a 1963 model. Can't remember what, what year yours was. I think it was 67, but... Was it, ours was an Irish registration. Look how low down... I know, <laughs> I just remember this, getting it? into this. It just feels like it's a car that's shrunk. Yeah. Tiny, aren't they? I remember the steering wheel like that, you know, with the Austin badge on it and the gear lever. Yeah. What was it that came off in your hand? Oh. It was the handbrake, wasn't it? What were you saying? I don't know. Where do you, where do you <laughs> I don't know where the, the, the voices started up. <laughs> I couldn't hear anything. <laughs> no, I was just saying about the interior. I remember the steering wheel. Yeah. I mean, I definitely remember that gear lever like that. Yeah. Well, I mean, the steering wheel is absolutely huge, isn't it? Yeah. And I also <laughs> remember that day that the handbrake came off in your hand yeah. on Hollywood Hill in St Albans. That's it. Yeah, you had the sliding windows. Yeah, I remember those. Yeah. And this sort of a roof round here that always used to rust. There's a little bit rust on there. 
and you had this trim around the edges and the rust used to start under the trim. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like exposed seams. I don't know what they thought they were doing there. Thought it was like a, you know, a nice little bit of trim we can put on there. Huge source of rust. And you changed the front, didn't you? I, I never well, really I, I knew crashed, why you did that. I, I crashed into someone. And you, in those days, <laughs> you, could, you could take the whole front off from about here to there, take the whole thing off and replace it with a fiberglass body. And then someone reversed into you when you changed to that, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, and I, someone... Got a grey one. No, I, I did the same. I crashed into someone in the same, virtually the same place. It was in the car park, wasn't it? In the work? car park at St Albans Exchange. Yeah. That was the 30th anniversary model. So this is a very special car. We'll perhaps do the QR in a minute. That was a very special interior. Looks like it got a lot of hi-fi or something in there. It was 1989 that. So 63 to 89. So this is all about uh, Alex Isigonis. The uh, little thing they were doing, the little uh, chat they were doing on the Morris was obviously Morris brought, uh, sorry, the Mini brought the Morris and Austin together, really, and it was a big success story because before they were struggling to integrate Morris and Austin. So you had Austin Minis and Morris, Morris Travellers and Mini Traveller. and cars like the 1300 or the 1100. Yes. Because my, my dad had one of these, not an MG, but... No, but he had Austin. a 1300. He had a 13... No, I think he only had an 1100. 1100, yeah. And he had an Austin, not, not an MG. Yeah. But it, I remember the dashboard the same. Yeah. I remember the boot, was sort yeah. of strange. Yeah, I mean, it, it did have a boot. It wasn't a hatchback, was it, by any stretch of the imagination? No, but I remem remember this. Yeah, yeah. So unusual. Yeah, so this 30th anniversary model was never registered for road use. That's why it's got no plates. It only ever covered 30 miles in its life. A very, very special car. Beautiful. Funny, isn't it? You have to bend right down to, to actually see it. Mm. I love the interior there, that's great. So this Jensen S41S has just come into the collection. It's only covered 27,000 miles and the, the one lady owner who owned it for 50 years. Beautiful. The back of it here, it's speakers on the back. Wow. Five four one S.
One of our favourite cars wasn't at the Escort. This is a Mark 1 from 1972. We had a Mark 2, didn't we, from 77? Uh, I think it was, yeah. Yeah. T-Ridge. 1300 GT, this one. Get through there. Yeah, so you've got the wider wheels. <laughs> oh, look at the interior. All the dials. Single speaker at the back. This is a Hosting Healy 3000. It's a Mark III from 1964. Wooden steering wheel. Just so many cars I recognise here. It's a Triumph Test, which is like the upmarket version of the Triumph Herald, wasn't it, really? Mm, yeah. Uh, convertible. Fast four-seater convertible. Yeah, so there's a little room in the back. Oh, look at that. <laughs> this brings back so ma many memories. Particularly, we only own, owned a Ford Toledo, but uh, yeah, the dashboard is so familiar. Even down to the gator on the gear lever and locker box. Now this is a Vauxhall, this is a VX490, it's 1964. And I'm sure this is the model that my dad had. All right. Do you remember the door handles then? Because yeah. it says, look at the door handles. Yeah, I know, I know. It's quite difficult to get down there, but the buttons are on the side. You push the buttons in. Try not to bump anything here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. The... Um, horn is on that ring around there. This is a Mark III, isn't it? So this is the earlier one. I think my dad had the older one. It's, even then it was rusting. In the back here. I think we had that in the 70s, I think. But it was a big comfortable car. I mean, so the MG, this is the TF 1953 and it says there America absolutely fell in love with the little uh, MGs. They sold so well over in the US. But this was a car that was, well its predecessor was a car that was built uh, before the war wasn't it? Mm. This is the 1953 version. We've got lap belt, seat belts, little side side uh, windows, great big long bonnet. <laughs> now we're coming to something I re <laughs> I remember over yeah, here. Yeah, the Austin Max. So. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so many cars to look at here, but you're drawn to the ones that you remember. <laughs> The Austin Maxis. So this is a 1981. So that's uh, one of the latter ones, isn't it? Yeah, so I learnt to drive in 1977. I mean, Dad had the previous version of the Austin Maxi. 73 you learnt to drive. 73, I beg your pardon, 73, <laughs> yeah, that's right. My Dad had the previous version of the Maxi, so this is the updated model. Oh, yeah. but it, you had acres of foot room in here because it was flat on the floor, you know, flat, no gearbox time because it was all front wheel drive. Huge space in the back. 
and a big hatchback. Massive hatchback. Yeah. Yeah, so I think my dad must have had the 72 model. Yeah, so we're going to completely ignore the Triumph TR6 and the GT6. Beautiful cars though they were. We had one of these. A Triumph Toledo. 1972 one. This is a 72 one. So this is 70, this is an M rage, we had an L rage. So we had, yeah. So this is 1973, so a year yeah. younger. So a year younger than ours. Oh yeah. <laughs> we had a brown one, didn't we? Yeah, ours, ours was a really disgusting brown. <laughs> this is a rather fetching sort of cherry, cherry red, red. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, this uh, brings back so much men so many memories. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> the centre speaker and the heater controls on there. You've got the choke and the wipers and the headlamp. Let me go around the other side. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> they must be quite rare, these, because the, the rust is something terrible. Well, I saw our one, didn't I, about ten years after we'd sold it, yeah. with a new front on and looking yeah. really sorry for yeah. itself. It rusted all well, along the one here. There, yeah. Yeah, and all down there. Yeah. But this is in immaculate condition. Someone's had a radio fitted to it. Has it didn't come with a radio, no, did it? No. Yeah, love it. Absolutely loved it. I mean, it was our first proper car, really, wasn't it? I mean, the Mini was okay. But it's my dad's originally, wasn't it? Then yeah. he sold it to us. Yeah. I bow down in front of you. <laughs> It's a lot like the uh, wing mirrors. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the wing mirrors are absolutely hopeless. Mm. And that's why I still call door mirrors wing mirrors. Because mm. <laughs> <laughs> we had wing mirrors. Oh, yeah. Right, I'm going now. I've seen the Triumph to I can't find that old picture of me cleaning it. And there are so many cars here. You know what we've missed, don't you? What's that? The marina. Oh, wow. Back to the marina. <laughs> yeah, the Morris 1800. So it says the styling is a bit challenging. It was called the Land Crab. <laughs> mm. I, think, I think the Maxi was, had slightly better styling. But it was like uh, an inflated Morris 1100, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Like someone had blown it up. This is actually in a towel. They changed the name, didn't they? Yeah, it's a marina, but yeah. they but called yeah. it in a towel for some reason. Yeah, we had a Morris marina before yeah. this. They changed it to a towel because it sounded a bit more exotic. It wasn't our favourite car. No. But it does bring back memories. Yeah. The, the, I remember the... Cur the a curving dashboard that moved the radio so it wasn't actually pointing at you it pointed at the passenger a reasonable uh, amount of room in the back and quite a big boot it was okay wasn't it we had the 1800 yeah we sold the Toledo for it didn't we yeah we sold that for this I think I still preferred that. The what, sorry? I still preferred that. Still prefer the Toledo, yeah. Yeah. It's a rover like Brian had. Yeah, our friend Brian, you, you saw at Peterborough. He had a rover V8 like this. This is a P6 V8 from 1973. And that was the brown, sort of brown we had on the Toledo, wasn't it? Yeah. The colour. My memories of this car are being in in the back with you and Brian. Brian and Rosie in the back, in the front? I think so, yeah. I think so. And Brian loved to demonstrate the kick down of the V8. Yeah. Yeah, it push you back into your seat. I think 
most powerful car I think I'd been in up to that time. It's got eight track. A wonderful smell. This one had headrests. <laughs> oh yeah. The Reliance, Reliance Sim Scimitar. The, Someone the had one of those, I can't remember who it was. Princess Anne. <laughs> was that alright? <laughs> no, we knew Everyone says, oh, Princess Anne had one of those. <laughs> <laughs> See, there's that brown colour again, which is very popular, isn't it? Yeah. That L Ridge. Yeah. So that was um, after the Austin Cambridge and the Morris Oxford, wasn't it? Wasn't that the Wolsey Well, that was the Wolsey version, version of it, yeah. 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 And you're into sunbeams. Sunbeam rape, yeah. Something we never, we never had a Hillman or a, no. a Roots vehicle, did we? Friend Susan's dad had one of these. Yeah. Someone said, is this a marina? It was a copy, really, wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> very similar from. Very similar, yeah. Almost identical at the back to the original marina. Yeah. That sloping bit at the back. Sort of similar door handles, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, oh, come on. This is incredible, really, isn't it? Yeah. You could spend Especially in this bit. Days. And obviously, this is our era, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Look what's over here. Well, this is a Fiesta convertible. Mm. X Reg Fiesta convertible. It's different. At least you can see inside it, eh? Oh, good grief. Look at that. Yeah, it looks quite big, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they, they weren't bad inside. No. We had an XR2. Yeah. C Reg XR2. That's right, which was 86. Everyone had one of these at one time, didn't they? Vauxhall, Chevette. Chevette, yeah. They were everywhere, weren't they? Yeah. The yeah. first Viva. Again, it says try to find one in such good condition as this. Probably would, would you? Wouldn't you? I mean, <laughs> Sitting next to it is a Viva. Route first Viva, isn't it? Yeah, the 1986. First small Vauxhall since the 1930s. So, friend Gordon had one of these. <laughs> and he used to drive like a madman when we went to college in London. Driving through the London traffic in this like it was a racing car. God. Frightened us to death. Can't have been much more than about 18. No, and it's got the wing mirrors again. Yeah, wing mirrors, that's why I call them wing mirrors. That's the way they were. Yeah. You haven't seen what's behind you, have you? Yes, I have. Have you? <laughs> that's a Ford Granada, 1972 Ford Granada. That's the Granada gear. 2.5, so the V6. 2.5. We had a 2.8, didn't we? Yeah, but you had a GL, not a gear. Yeah, and it was a... was automatic. was automatic. And it was sort but, of a grey, dark grey, wasn't it? Yeah, this is the model before the one we had, isn't it? I think. Can't remember what... Yeah, this is the model that uh, Brian had. That's right. Again... Had that, you had that white one, didn't he? He had terrible trouble with rust again. Yeah, yeah. Shame. Yeah. I think he had a P Ridge one. Yeah. Look at the console there. Right. So a Mark III Escort. We had a beige Mark III Escort. Ours <laughs> was 83. Yeah. That was our first new car, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so first new car and at that time, I think it was the first front-wheel drive car we'd had. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Remember that, then? Yep. This, I mean, this is a basic one, wasn't it? I think yes. ours was a GL. Gear. It was, it was a, gear. a gear. Yeah. 
Yeah, so this is the base model. I think this is a very early one. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, very nice. Astra? Mark II Astra. Yeah, and again my dad had this, didn't he? Mark II. Cortina. That's because that was like our one because it's got the gear badge on the side. That was the gear, yeah. So yeah. we had that model. In with a sunroof. Sunroof, yeah. In beige with a very attractive brown seating, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, beige with brown seating. Yeah. Very, very fashionable at the, the time. The time, yeah. This place is at the gold mine, isn't it? Mm, amazing. Ford Capri. Yeah. Worked with somebody who had one of those. Yeah, a 2.8. Yeah, it was a 2.8 as well. TR7. And... The camper van. Yeah, they do have a motor home <laughs> here. So the Ford Transit camper from 1971. So 1970s troubled times. And pop top roof. Let's have a look what we've got inside. Electrolux fridge. Lots of drawers. Two burner hob. Lots of cupboard space. <laughs> a raising roof. Rising roof, yeah. Rising roof. So you could sleep up there or you could sleep down there. So you could sleep four in here. Quite a big area. basic up, up front but <laughs> a transit custom yeah so this is a Rover Vitesse twin plenum Rover Vitesse a seriously quick car Jenny's dad had one of the rather slower models of this he had the was it a 2 2.2 two? I can't remember 2.2 two. this is a V8 Bit of a beast. It's a Mark One XR2. Yeah. Ours was a Mark Two, two. XR2. But I did work with someone who had a blue Mark One. Yeah. And these are still available, really, as classic cars, aren't they? So. Mm. Yeah. Very nice. Little sunroof. That was a very nice car. Yeah. Nineties to today here. The MG Maestro. No, it's not. It's a Montego. Oh, Montego. I beg your pardon. Montego. That was a bigger version, wasn't it? No, it was the boot version. All oh, right. Yeah. yeah the spoiler on the back. Alloy wheels. We'll try for claims. That's the input from Honda. Brought these along. Back to the future. <laughs> DeLorean DMC 1, 1 1.2. Take me back to the future. It does look fantastic. With a goal gold wing doors brushed aluminium finish like a fighter cockpit in here yeah very good what other beauties have we got in here got a sierra yeah we never had a sierra or a cortina Probably one of the later Cortinas, wasn't it? Yeah, the an 82 Cortina. Very similar sort of steering wheel to the Granada. You have the metal wheel trims on steel wheels. Big boot. Yeah. 
Here we are, McLaren. Just a little bit different. Look at the wheels there. Look at the size of the discs. Good grief. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, so this is a Triumph Acclaim 1982, only one owner, and it was the last car to bear the Triumph name. 1982. Yeah, it was a sad story, wasn't it, really? Yeah. Mondeo. Uh, MG. Must have been one of the last British Leyland MGs, wasn't it? Or BLMC or whatever they were called. I can't remember what they were called, next. Well, how about a Bentley Continental T? Fast and fabulous. And here's one of the last Minis, the Mini Cooper Sport 2000. Keep coming back to the 80s, Jen. I know. I don't, we never really owned anything in there, did we? No, no. Never had a Metro. No. I remember seeing the launch of the Austin Princess at Woburn, wasn't it? Uh, one of the places they launched it. And it looked like it was leaning forward to me. Yeah. It was just saying on the guide here that the 90s was a disaster for British manufacturing really. You know, the deals with the Chinese fell through and mm. Longbridge closed. They brought the bulldozers in and... Yeah, yeah. But there's still, you know, fantastic vehicles being made. I was saying about that McLaren up there. 205 mile an hour yeah. British supercar. Mm. But yeah, still come back to this. 